Hi, welcome to this episode of ADF Architecture TV. My name is Frédéric Desbien and I'm part of the ADF product management team. Today's topic is internationalization. It's a topic I'm very familiar with since my home country, Canada, is officially bilingual. If you go to the store, nearly every product available will be labeled in both French and English and it's the same online or with software systems. Now, in today's episode, what we cover are the basic concepts of internationalization and most of the technical examples I will provide are related to the Java Standard Edition platform. Why is that? Basically, Oracle ADF is a superset of Java Enterprise Edition and Enterprise Edition relies on Standard Edition for its runtime. So, when you build an ADF application, most of the internationalization features you use are coming in front from the JVM itself. So, this is why there isn't much ADF-specific content in today's session. But now, let's go on and learn more about internationalization. For lots of people, internationalization is just about translating some text in the screens. Well, it's certainly a big part of it, because if you don't offer to your users a user interface in their own preferred languages, the application obviously will be much more difficult for them to use. At the same time, internationalization is much wider than that. It encompasses cultural and even legal aspects. For example, at the start of my career, I had colleagues in India. I was soliciting uh, feedback on a document I had written, and the first reply I got from India started with, I have some doubts about your document. So my first movement was to be a bit offended by that. How can he have doubts about this document? I mean, okay, maybe it's not perfect, but still. But I wasn't sure about what my colleague meant, so I went to my supervisor. And then my supervisor basically told me, hey, there's no problem here. He's just, as, he's just saying that he's got some questions about your document. So you see, both my colleague in India and I were speaking English, but we were giving a slightly different meaning to a specific expression. So now, multiply that by the number of screens that you've got in your application, the number of icons, and you see all the possibilities for misunderstanding that you have. So, internationalization is not just about the text, but the global, cultural and social context into which your application uh, will be used. Okay, now, to get back at more <laughs> technical topics. Um, an important thing to know about internationalization uh, when you think about it in the context of Oracle ADF is that ADF is mostly using the features um, that can be found in the Java Standard Edition and Java Enterprise Edition platforms. So ADF does not reinvent the wheel, so if you've built applications using other Java-based framework, chances are you already know mostly how to internationalize an ADF application. The semantics that are used when you talk about internationalization in the context of ADF are exactly the same as those of the Java platform. But before we go into greater detail about specific implementation details, let's take a step back and think about the basic concepts of internationalization. The first concept is internationalization itself. In the words of the World Wide Web Consortium, the internationalization is the design and development of a product, application or document content that enables easy localization for target audiences that vary in culture, region or language. So the key word here is localization. And what is localization exactly? Well, localization 
once again in the words of the W3C, is the adaptation of a product, application or document to meet the language, cultural and other requirements of a, of a specific target market. And you, call, you can call the bundle of the language, cultural and other requirements a locale. So basically, as you can see, internationalization and by extension localization are not just about translating text streams. So now let's put those concepts in relation one to another. So basically when you localize an application, the application will be adapted or converted for use to a specific locale. Now you can have also multilingual applications. Multilingual applications uh, typically have a fixed language for the user interface but will support uh, multiple languages for the contents they manage. For example, if you download and install OpenOffice uh, in French, well, the menus and all the options will be displayed in French, the error messages, etc. But I'm still able with that tool to write documents in English, for example, and even to have the spell checker and that kind of stuff. So the user interface is fixed, but the application supports multilingual content. And finally, internationalization is really when you have a system designed to for use in a wide range of locale, and obviously it extends beyond language support. For example, it will include legal compliance and social conventions. So, for example, um, most countries have a value-added tax, so it makes sense for the business rules to calculate this value-added tax to change from one country to another. So it really is not just about some text strings, but sometimes you will have country or local specific uh, business logic that you need to take into account. So, in the context of the Java platform, what is a locale? Well, uh, there is the Java Util Local uh, Java Dog that states that a locale represents a specific geographical, political, or cultural region. And in Java Standard Edition, uh, and by extension Java Enterprise Edition, uh, a locale possesses several attributes, and those attributes make up the code for that locale. So each attribute has got some specific code and together all those codes make up the code for a very very specific locale. So the first code you get is language that's based on an ISO standard. So for example you will have EN for English and JE for Japanese. Then you have the script or the alphabet that's used. So LATN for the Latin alphabet, that's the most uh, commonly used, but uh, you can have the Cyrillic alphabet or uh, several different alphabets in, in Chinese and Japanese, for example. Then you have country and region variations, US for uh, United States, FR for France, or O29 for the Caribbean. And obviously, here it enables you to distinguish various uh, variants inside a specific language. So, for example, the, the, the kind of French that is spoken in Canada is not the same as, uh, as you can find it in French or Belgium. There are some words who's got uh, specific meanings and you need sometimes to take that into account. You have also, in some cases, variants and extensions. And variants, you know, uh, are very, very specific specializations of a locale, and extensions can be user defined or uh, uh, defined uh, in the JVM itself. So, for example, you have uh, extensions where you can specify uh, a specific calendar, for example. So, when you put all those codes um, back to back, you get the specific code for a locale. So, for example, if I want to, to configure a set of messages for the Canadian French locale, I will uh, specify FR for the language and CA for the country. 
Another important uh, concept um, when you talk about locales is the concept of format. A format is a specific visual representation and a set of parsing rules for locale sensitive information, such as dates, messages and numbers. So a locale may support many different formats. Uh, for example, in Canada, you don't represent uh, figures uh, in the same way whether you use French or English, but typically a locale will define a default format for everything. In the case of dates, don't forget uh, the time zone, because the Java Util date object implicitly takes the time zone into account, but if you don't specify it when you create the date, well, the object will be created with the default time zone for the server. So sometimes it's not what you desire and you need to code something for the, for the application to be able to arise. Uh, also, money. Uh, when you manipulate numbers in general and money in particular, there's no concept of money in the Java platform. You need to manipulate the, the currency and the amount in two distinct attributes and this means typically you will use java.math.bigdecimal to uh, store the number but uh, on the other end you will use java.util.currency to manipulate the currency symbol and the two together enable you to have an amount specified um, in a specific currency so it's really important if you just use the amount uh, you won't be able to store the, the, the currency in it. So here are a few examples of uh, currency and uh, number formats uh, on the Java platform. So currency, for example, the, the, the US dollar has got its own sign and um, in South Korea they are using the won and it's got its very distinctive currency sign as well. Uh, in Germany uh, formerly, they were using the Deutsche Mark, and this was the DM symbol uh, placed at the end of the amount. On the other end, uh, in the case of numbers, uh, the decimal separator uh, can, can vary from, from the period to the comma. And this means when you parse numbers and when you display them, you need to be very, very careful and not to hard code you know, those uh, separators. You need to take the locale into account. And the nice thing about the Java platform is that it enables you to retrieve that information about the locale by querying the Java Util locale uh, class. So it's really, really nicely done, but you need to be obviously careful about what you do. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, internationalization is about much more than just text strings, and this is why we have several other episodes coming up. The first one won't be specific to ADF, but will cover user interface design. In it, I will provide you guidance on how to build good-looking UIs that are meant to adapt to several distinct languages and cultural contexts. After that, We'll have three other episodes centered on ADF specific topics. And so we'll cover resource bundles, we'll cover character encoding, and finally, we'll have one episode on time zone management. So stay tuned. I'm Frédéric Desbiens. Thank you for watching this episode of ADF Architecture TV.